Hi Year 10, as you know I'm away this week on a course so I am beaming into the classroom anyway as a virtual lesson. Anyway, I hope you're all having a good week. Um, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Shadowlands. As you know, we started making photographs about shadows, plants and flowers uh, last week. Shadows really are a love-hate relationship for photographers. Um, I think sometimes we find that we don't want shadow and we get shadow. Uh, we can spend a lot of time trying to diminish or shrink back shadows or lighten up a scene enough, yet finding that then we get stark shadows that we don't want. Um, but at the same time, obviously, shadows for us are very useful things. They're very beautiful things. They can add a real sense of drama, intrigue, mystery, and um, quite simply darkness to what we photograph. Um, and there are lots of images that we've studied, or certainly photographers that we've looked at already, such as Imogen Cunningham, have used shadow, especially with natural forms, to really, really good effect. Um, so I've said there, artists have always been fascinated by shadows and use them to create drama and mystery in their work. Simply, shadows also help create the illusion of form and are the element that brings a sense of depth and dimension to visual art. When Imogen Cunningham took the photographs of plants and flowers, she noticed the shadows um, they created as much as the shapes of petals and leaves. So for Cunningham, when she looked at those natural forms, she understood that they became much more uh, meaningful, perhaps, but certainly dimensional uh, because of the presence of the shadow, that stark contrast uh, within an otherwise very softly toned image. We've seen lots of examples of her uh, very zoomed in work um, and you've made some photographs yourself that are very, very similar. And likewise, when we looked at Blosvelt, you went and made your own versions. And for his work, what we discovered is we had to try and get rid of a background shadow altogether. Now, we learned lots of tips and techniques, tricks, of how to do that, because shadows can be difficult. Um, and when they're unwanted, they can actually ruin the effect of an image. So sometimes in work like this of Blosvelt, um, we've tried so hard to get rid of that background shadow um, so that we can really focus on what's in the foreground. Um, so a new artist for us today is Martine Le Cornec. She creates paintings of plants, um, but then juxtaposes her paintings with the shadows cast by the actual plants she's painted. Um, so by putting the real thing, so to speak, and the image together, she creates something new that has a sense of falseness. It's a really strange way of interplaying a reality with an image um, and it's something I guess more meaningfully we could really have a look at together in class later. So you can see on the screen now we've got the painted flower forms and then we've got the shadows. That happens in her work across really all of it. So today what I'm going to get you to do is to create a page in your book analysing the way our source artists have used or avoided using shadows in their photographs, making connections to your own recent work and the earlier images you've made based on our influencing artists. You're going to introduce the new source of uh, Martine Le Cornec, sorry there's a spelling error there, comparing what she does to others. Um, and I've prepared an image sheet for you that I've printed out, Mrs Autumn can distribute that um, to help you create a new page in your book. Of course, you're going to cut neatly, please uh, present it beautifully. I don't want to see any ragged edges. Emil, I'm talking to you. Um, so here we go. This is your image sheet. You've got three examples by Martine McCornick. You've got uh, an example by Imogen Cunningham, an example by Keith Dotson, and an example by Keith um, Carl Blosfeld. So these are all people that we've studied already. You're going to write very specifically about how they use shadow or how they avoid using shadow and what effect that has in their work and you're going to do a little bit of analysis of what you see in Martine McCormick's work as well as our new source. You refer to your own work that's very very important 
I just go back to the task page to recap, create a page in your book, analyze the way our source artists have used or avoided using shadows in their photographs, make connections to your own recent work and the earlier images you've made based on our influencing artists, introduce the new source of Martine Le Cornic, comparing what she does to those others. Use the image sheet resource to help you create your page, cutting neatly and presenting beautifully. Anyway, that should take you the entirety of the lesson. If you still haven't done it, help yourself to the frame out the big box at the back of the room. Um, we do want to get our Nature Senses uh, exhibition up when I come back later this week. Um, I want you to also please, as an extension, if you run out of things to do, is many of you have actually still got to write your exhibition statement. And I need that to happen before I can put up the exhibition, please, so that I can pair your image with your uh, bit of blurb, your meaning, the thing you're gonna write that justifies why you've done what you've done. So that's something additional you can do today if you complete the other task. So have a good lesson, everybody. I look forward to seeing you later this week. Um, good luck. <laughs>